The member for London West. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. It's uh, an honour for me to, uh, to rise in this House today on behalf of the people I represent in London West to, uh, to join the debate on Bill 45, the uh, Making Healthier Choices Act. And uh, I want to say at the outset, as my colleagues have been very clear about, uh, New Democrats will be supporting this bill. And we will be supporting it because we have been calling on the government to take action on the exact same health promotion issues that are addressed in uh, Bill 45 for years. We have been pushing the government to ensure that Ontarians have information about the calories they are consuming when they buy their meals in restaurants, and we have been pushing the government to protect the health of young people by introducing new measures to discourage smoking. My colleague, the member for Nickel Belt and the health critic for the Ontario NDP caucus, has been leading this fight since she was first elected to this legislature back in 2007. She has introduced at least 11 private members' bills on calorie menu labeling and stricter tobacco control measures, and she was one of the first to raise red flags about the lack of regulation of e-cigarettes. And I want to acknowledge her leadership and her persistence because the member for Nickel Belt did not give up. Despite uh, prorogation and two elections, uh, despite the Liberal government's unwillingness to take action, the member for Nickel Belt kept reintroducing her legislation until the government finally agreed to address the issues that are before us today in Bill 45. I'm proud of the work she has done, proud to be her colleague, and it is thanks to her dedication that MPPs are debating this important legislation today. So, uh, Bill, uh, Bill 45 includes three schedules. The first schedule deals with calorie counts on menus. The second schedule deals with flavored tobacco products. And the third schedule deals with e-cigarettes, also known as vaporizers. Uh, schedule 1 requires owners and operators of food service establishments with 20 or more locations in Ontario to display the number of calories in each food or drink item offered for sale. By requiring calorie labeling on the menus of chain restaurants, Bill 45 will help families make more informed decisions about their food choices. It is good public policy and is a natural extension of the requirements that have been in place over the last decade for nutritional information to be included on pre-packaged food. Ontarians use that nutritional information to make healthy choices when they are buying food at the grocery store. There is evidence to show that once that information became available, consumers used their purchasing power to force brand names to change their recipes, and food processing companies used the information to promote their products, uh, to advertise their products as reduced fat or low sodium, for example. As people's lives have gotten more busy over the past decade, we are seeing more and more people eating in restaurants. On average, Canadians prepare and eat at home only two out of every three meals. With Bill 45, nutritional information is moving from the back of a packaged box to the front of a restaurant menu. And certainly some restaurants have already taken steps to make calorie counts available to their customers, but it's usually on the back of a placemat or on a, a company website or in a brochure that's buried behind the counter. The difference is that Bill 45 would make the information available at point of sale. Customers wouldn't have to ask for it uh, or have staff search for it. It would be available on the menu display board when a customer goes into a fast food restaurant, and it would be available at all restaurants across the province with more than 20 locations. Point of sale menu labeling will help people make more informed choices about their food items, and it also makes a difference in the choices that people make. The Ontario Medical Association has found that children eat almost twice as many calories when they eat at a restaurant compared to eating at home. And we know that there is much greater risk of being overweight as adults when children are overweight in their youth. We've also heard about the significant health costs associated with being overweight. The financial cost to Ontario's health care system is about $1.6 billion annually in direct costs with another $2.9 billion in indirect costs. While Bill 45 will not end
in and of itself reverse the statistics on youth obesity, it is an important step in the right direction. But frankly, Speaker, it's too bad that it is such a small step. Bill 45 will only require calories to be posted. It will not provide anywhere near the kind of information that consumers can get from a package in a grocery store. It will not require restaurants to post the sodium content of their menu items, as was required by the private member's bill brought forward by the member for Nickel Belt. It will not require food service premises to list the recommended daily caloric intake for children, youth and adults, as was recommended by Ontario's Healthy Kids panel in the Healthy Kids strategy. The Middlesex, Health, or the Middlesex London Health Unit from my community sent a letter to the Premier earlier this month urging that Bill 45 be amended to include clear, prominent labelling of both calories and sodium content on menus. Their letter cites a study conducted in 2013 that showed alarmingly high sodium content in Canadian restaurant foods. Children's fast food items contained an average of 790 milligrams of sodium per serving, which is two-thirds of the recommended intake for children. Children's side dishes contained an additional 375 milligrams of sodium. The health unit points out that while calorie counts are essential to address obesity prevention, information about sodium content is also needed to achieve broader public health goals. And Speaker, we know that Canadians want more information about the food they consume. Just over a year ago, Environics reported that 92% of Canadian adults agreed that it's important to know the nutritional breakdown of the foods they eat. Nine out of ten Canadians felt that they would be missing pertinent information if they only got calorie counts. In addition to calories, they wanted to know the total amounts of fat, sodium, trans trans fats and sugars. Another study by a researcher at the University of Waterloo showed that publishing this information, making consumers aware of calorie and sodium counts, can trigger concrete changes in behaviour. It can switch people's decisions about what they're going to eat. Certainly I know that when I check the nutritional information on the items I purchase at the grocery store, I will put something back on the shelf if I find that it's too high in sodium. So the lack of sodium content information in this bill is a real concern to New Democrats and a real concern to public health experts across this province. The second schedule of Bill 45 amends the Smoke-Free Ontario Act to prohibit the sale of flavoured tobacco products. It also allows Cabinet the authority to exempt certain flavoured tobacco products from the new ban. Our understanding from the government is that the exemption will apply to menthol-flavoured tobacco products for a period of two years, after which the sale of these products will also be prohibited. This schedule of the bill doubles the maximum fines for individuals and corporations for many contraventions of the Smoke-Free Ontario Act, making these penalties the highest in Canada, and also authorizes inspectors to seize tobacco products that are prohibited for sale. One thing that is not in this schedule of the bill is the date that the legislation will come into force. The, the schedule currently says only that it will take effect on a day to be named by proclamation. So it's hard to know from the current wording of the legislation exactly when flavoured tobacco products and menthol products in particular will be banned. New Democrats have major questions and concerns about this schedule of the bill, which we hope will be be addressed when the bill goes to committee. First, we do not understand the rationale for exempting menthol-flavoured tobacco products from the ban for a period of two years. During her speech on Bill 45, my colleague, the member for Nickel Belt, shared her experience with her private member's bill to ban cigarillos. Her legislation passed, which as we know is rare for private member's bill and demonstrates all party recognition of the importance of this issue. However, the bill became obsolete obsolete before it could be enacted because the tobacco companies figured out a way to reinvent their product so that it would not be subject to the ban. 
By giving tobacco companies two years' notice before the phase-out of menthol products, what we are doing is giving them two years to find other means to get their products into the hands of young people. The government is caving to the pressure of the tobacco companies and providing them with a window that they can use to find loopholes and come up with new menthol products that will entice young people to start smoking. Because from the tobacco industry's perspective, the earlier you can hook a young person on smoking, the longer you'll have a customer and the more money you'll make. That is, until the smoker dies from cancer or other smoking-related diseases. Selling flavored tobacco, tobacco that is packaged to look like candy, that comes in cherry, grape, and all kinds of, uh, of tempting flavors, has been a very effective marketing strategy for the tobacco industry to gain new customers among youth. According to the Canadian Cancer Society, fully half of Canadian youth who reported smoking used flavoured tobacco products. In Ontario, that represents more than 57,000 youth. And make no mistake about it, menthol tobacco has also been a key part of the tobacco industry's marketing strategy. In fact, it is the most popular flavour of flavoured tobacco. More than 19,000 Ontario youth, or one in four of the youth who are smokers, say that they are smoking menthol cigarettes. Even more troubling from a public health perspective is the fact that high school students who smoke menthol smoke substantially more cigarettes per week and are three times more likely to intend to keep smoking. Tobacco use continues to be the leading preventable cause of death and disease in our province. It is responsible for 30% of all cancer deaths and 85% of lung cancer cases. In Ontario, there are, there are 13,000 deaths each year from tobacco use. Stopping youth from smoking before they start is incredibly important because the vast majority of smokers start before the age of 18. Removing tobacco products that target youth can have a huge impact on smoking and cancer rates in this province. A government that is serious about reducing the unacceptable toll of illness and death from tobacco use must do everything possible to prevent tobacco companies from seducing our young people. I want to share with members of this House a statement I received from a high school student in London named Jack Zan, who is the co-chair of Youth Can a London youth group that meets monthly to plan activities involving cancer prevention, advocacy and fundraising in schools and the community. Youth Can's slogan is, you are never too young to make a difference in the fight against cancer. Youth Can has organized many different events in London to reach out to people in our community and last year collected 1,376 signatures in support of Bill 45. Jack wrote to me and said, as a teenager, I truly believe Bill 45 is a crucial bill to be passed. For several months, our Youth Can team with the Canadian Cancer Society have been going around London collecting signatures with the goal of banning the use of flavoured tobacco in Ontario. Flavoured tobacco is a sneaky and deceptive tactic used by the tobacco industry to attack to attract youth into smoking in order to replace the dying smokers. If this bill passes, the future would look a lot brighter for us youth today. End the flavour by passing Bill 45. The third schedule of the bill enacts the Electronic Cigarettes Act 2014 to regulate the sale, display, promotion and use of e-cigarettes in Ontario, which are also known as vaporizers. This schedule of the Act also bans the sale or supply of electronic cigarettes and any components to anyone under age 19. In addition, this section or this schedule of the bill bans the sale of prescribed flavored e-cigarettes. This means that flavored e-cigarettes will still be available for sale until they are specifically prescribed as banned. 
New Democrats believe that regulations to restrict the sale and use of e-cigarettes to persons over age 19 make good sense. I know that we have all received emails from people with conflicting information about e-cigarettes, but we believe that the government needs to act on the basis of the precautionary principle. That is, until there is a solid body of evidence concerning the health impacts of e-cigarettes, we need to take precautions and treat e-cigarettes just as we treat conventional cigarettes. But aside from the health impacts, of e-cigarettes. We support regulating these products because we want to ensure that smoking is not normalized again. We do not want young people to vape and then perhaps pick up smoking too. We do not want to undo the work that has taken decades to achieve to denormalize smoking by uh, allowing e-cigarettes. Speaker, in closing, I want to reiterate the support of the NDP caucus for this bill. However, it is important to keep in mind that the bill does not do everything the Liberals say it does. The Liberals claim that menthol tobacco products will be banned, but as I have pointed out, the bill says nothing about menthol specifically. Uh, it also, the bill also allows the government to exempt certain flavored tobacco products from the ban, and we have been told by the Liberals that this means that menthol tobacco products will be exempted for a period of two years. Speaker, New Democrats support Bill 45. There is no question about it, but we would like to see it go much further. We would like to see an explicit ban on menthol tobacco products. We would like to see sodium labeling on restaurant menus, as well as recommended caloric intakes. New Democrats will work to make Bill 45 stronger by proposing amendments in committee. We will continue to work with public health professionals and advocates to ensure that health promotion efforts uh, remain at the forefront of the political agenda. When we look at issues around sodium labelling, for example, we know that 9 out of 10 people in Ontario consume too much sodium, sodium that, makes it, makes, or that compromises their health. Uh, uh, over uh, consumption of sodium is associated with, with all kinds of, uh, of complications such as high blood pressure, stroke, health health failure or heart failure, kidney disease, osteoporosis, stomach cancer, the list goes on. Speaker, we have an opportunity in Bill 45 to address some of these issues and to provide Ontarians with clear information about the sodium content of the items they are purchasing in restaurants. And New Democrats believe that this is an important health promotion um, responsibility and uh, we would like to see the, uh, the legislative the legislation amended to include uh, sodium content. Speaker, it has taken the Liberals a long time to finally do the right thing for the health of families and kids. The Liberals could have passed a bill requiring menu labelling six years ago. They could have supported the private members' legislation that was originally brought forward by my colleague, the MPP for Nickel Belt. They could have supported her, her other private member's uh, bill to ban flavoured tobacco products, uh, which she introduced in the last parliament. Uh, clearly, Speaker, uh, governments should be doing all we can to prevent young people from starting to smoke and to encourage people to quit. Banning all flavours of tobacco products in all types of, uh, of products is critical to this effort. Uh, speaker, uh, in closing, I urge the support of MPPs uh, across this legislature for Bill 45. It's an important 
important and much needed step to a healthy Ontario. It is widely supported by people in my community of London West and I know uh, by people who uh, in ridings across this province and, uh, and I look forward to seeing its, uh, its passage through this legislature, its, uh, its uh, comprehensive review uh, in committee so that improvements can be made and so that the, uh, the, health, the health of Ontarians can be taken into account and uh, a much stronger bill come back to this legislature for third reading and enacted in the province of Ontario. Thank you, Speaker.